What's trapping? It's Reggie Beckton, and you're listening to Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. We back, we back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the music business and the music culture. I am the host, head honcho, vegan chorizo poppy, multiple miles Monday poppy, founder of Bald Nigga Ballers. I am Armand Sadler, happy to be (laughs) with you all. It's a lovely Monday morning. We love to start our weeks with you. Uh, We hope you love starting your weeks with our voices. I said voices because it's plural. I'm not here alone. Co-host, how you feeling? What's up, y'all? How you doing? Nick Early, executive producing, co-host, and stay busy. We have a really good show today, y'all. We have mm-hmm. some fun stuff to talk about. But this past week, we've done a few things. We've been yeah. here in, in here a little bit. You yeah, know man. what I'm saying? We just, just released uh, something for y'all to check out, mm-hmm. a new installment of a series that we're going to be doing called Busy Sessions mm-hmm. yep. uh, with the man Reggie Beckton. Big shout out to him. Shout out to Reggie, Edgar, Maggie, and Marquise um, for coming through. They were on a tour stop. Um, yep. It was cold that night, too. And, uh, you know, Reggie pulled up. And we had a really great conversation. Y'all check that out exclusively on the Stay Busy YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, send it to a friend. Send it to an ex. Send it to whoever. Um, but we also. We'll go. I was going to say, it might hit with the ex. Right. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we also got to see the man perform live, finally. Mm-hmm. Um, Reggie had a show at Elsewhere with Grace Weber. Um, Love that. Really, really great show. Loved Reggie said he did Monte Carlo, which which yes. Nick, Nick was very happy <laughs> yes. about the outro on the project. Um, and yeah, yeah, like it was really good to finally see him in action. See Megan and Edgar running around, all busy, and you know they their their hard work paid off because it was a really enjoyable show. Grace Weber blew me away personally. She astounding, is, yeah, like she. Just different. It, it, it's very <laughs> different. And it's something we're going to get into later. It's right, like, right, right, right. I, I got connected with her through Reggie, listened to her music on Spotify. I was like, oh, she dope. And then, but seeing her live, like, oh, okay. Like, you're you're like that. Um, so, shout out to both of them. We we had a great time. And um, I got to catch up with Grace after, told her yeah. she has she has an open invite to stay busy. So, y'all might, y'all might hear from her soon. You know what I'm right saying? Right over there, Grace. Yeah. Right over there. That's you right there, exactly. <laughs> um, but we want to shout out to all of our listeners tapping back in for season three. Whether you like chocolate or candy, Edge or Randy, book bags or fannies, and babysitters or nannies. Well, isn't interesting chocolate and candy? Like, isn't all chocolate is candy, but not all candy is chocolate? Right, exactly. So okay. I'm, I'm I'm thinking like Starburst versus Fruit Reese's, candy, yeah, yes. fruity, sweet type okay. stuff, but not chocolatey, yeah. <sighs> Definitely chocolate for me. Okay. Snickers are too fire. Twix is too fire. Snickers are <laughs> peanut like Peanut M&M's is too fire. Yeah, peanut M&M's. So they, yeah. They, they're, yeah. yeah. I, I, I might like the peanut ones better than the regular M&M's. Bruh, for real. The peanut joints is peanut M&M's or, or nothing. Very For different. me. Yeah. Uh, then what else we got? We got Edge or Randy. These this are wrestlers. This is some wrestlers. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't Rand, know if Nick's talking about Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Yeah, yeah. Mr. RKO. You know, yes. <laughs> RKO. Oh, he's gonna hit him with the RKO. out of nowhere. <laughs> Randy Orton. Yeah. With the R- yeah, definitely RKO. Yeah, <laughs> my guy. Mm-hmm. Book bags or fannies. Um, Different applications, I feel like. Yeah, Fanny is like a mini book. book they ain't right. Like, yeah, co- I can't your, compare those. I mean, hey, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm going for the rhymes, bro. <laughs> the rhymes. Book bag or Fanny? Uh, book bag. Mm. And uh, 
and babysitter and nanny. Bro, you done did the same. <laughs> These are all, all the right, same. So a nanny, I think of an older person. A babysitter could be someone who's like a teenager, you know what I'm saying, or a young or adult. Or just a person sitting or, the baby. I mean, sure. No sure. age implied. But also, sometimes <laughs> the, the nanny be living with the family. The babysitter, I feel like nannies more it implies regularity or familiar yeah, comfortability. Yeah, yeah. Babysitter's like a freelancer. They come, they go, 10-day contract, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that's I'm, I'm going for the rhymes. <laughs> I will go with nanny because we like familiar, familiarity. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool, cool. Shout out to our VP of everything holding it down in Ithaca, brother Kieran Hurley, the man that you cannot see. But you feel them. Mm-hmm. Shout out to dis- our distribution platform, Anchor. If you do not know, Anchor distribute your podcast for free to all the streaming platforms, and you can get some sponsored ads regardless of your listenership. Of course, good old HMD Studios, the man Camden holding it down. No silky today again. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's, he's, he's he's getting ready for, for the winter. He's growing it indeed, out. You know, he, he's trying trying to not have a cold scalp. I, I feel it. I, I feel that. it. Uh, plenty to chat about. Very very active release <laughs> yeah. weekend. Um, Heat wave, day walkers, summer walker hive. I think you're going to be happy with our takes on <laughs> Still Over It. Still Over It released this past weekend. 20 songs, features from uh, Omarion, Lil Durk, Pharrell and the Neptunes, Ari Lennox, uh, narration from Sierra and Cardi B. Of course, JT on X for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, Scissors on there. Scissor, oh, Scissor, of course, of course. Uh, overall, and I might be jumping off the porch with this. Still over it is better than over it. Pause. Oh, dramatic effect. <laughs> Wait. Oh, my gosh. Still over it is better than over it to me. Yeah. Um, why do I think so? Because, and we've had this conversation extensively, still over it gave what I f- became a fan of Summer Walker for. Exactly. Instrumental, mm-hmm. neo-soul type stuff. There's definitely some elements of the trap and be a, yeah, a little bit, but it's not as overwhelming as it is on Over It. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying Over It is bad. I just like something different from Summer. Still Over It gave us that. The songwriting on there I thought was superb. I feel like the the, the whole moment surrounding it, because we know what she's been going exactly. through. So it was cool that she titled the songs with, with, with the dates, yeah. the, yeah, the yeah. song titles corresponding to different dates, different chapters in her relationship with London on a track. Uh, my favorite songs would be Fourth Baby Mama is insane. Like She hangs that man out to dry. She said, here's the clip. I've emptied it for you. Yeah. She, <laughs> oh, man. Like, Talk about your mama. Whew. You bring somebody mama in, it's, it's kind of a different. Your mama should have whooped your ass. It's, a, it's kind of a, yeah. That's kind of a different sort of, that's a different level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, fourth baby mama, screwing with Omarion, I really love. That joint was tough. Yeah. Unloyal with Ari Lennox is crazy. Um, that's another thing black folks going to do is put an on when it's not supposed to. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely it's disloyal. disloyal. <laughs> You just but, look, you overlook it when the song is heat. Right? Exactly, that's not the point. <laughs> unloyal, God is so mad she can't even remember grammar. But no, yeah. unloyal is to me mm-hmm. the standout. Yeah. Um, but go ahead, you were still. Uh, th- th- those are really it. I mean, I I, I would have liked a shorter project probably. I, I saw twenty and I was like, ah. but most of the songs are good, so I, I'm I'm not complaining about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, for for all of the cautious optimism i had going into this summer delivered as she has throughout her career Uh but yeah i would say still over it's better than over it for sure i mean i listened to over it one time so i can't even really yeah why would i run it back uh responsible revisit Mm -hmm. no 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 (laughs) Um, i went after i listened to over i went and ran the clear ep and Mm -hmm. and and cleansed myself Mm -hmm. but um so so i i'll be honest i was sitting in there I was telling you this. I was sitting there, y'all, listening to this project. Like, all right, <laughs> you know, I because I be trying to like. I'm like, I'm trying to like this summer yep. stuff. I'm trying to see what y'all talking about. You know, she's this and that. People talking about Queen of R and B and this and all that. Oof. I seen that today. Yeah, from one of our friends. Mm. <laughs> he know who he is. <laughs> Could Cole say his name? Who is it? What up, Dwa? Dwa said it. <laughs> yes, oh I seen God. that on your IG. <sighs> what up, Dwa? <sighs> Um, and this is why we, we we get into being so critical because the hyperbole. You know, I avoided the timeline when I listened to this album last night. I completely avoided the timeline. I was like, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to see tweets that'll make me not like this music. I just. I want to experience it for myself. Exactly. And experiencing it for myself, I was, was very great. pleased yeah. with what I heard. So I, I sat there listening to it like, all right, all right, here we go. 
All right, let's see what it's up to. <laughs> and, you know, I was trying to listen open-minded, but the first five joints, mm-hmm. to me, can stay on the hard drive. Mm. Those joints, I didn't think the album didn't start until You Don't Know Me came on. Mm. I was I was like, I was at work when I listened. So I was doing another task. I'm like, man, I'm really trying to sit through this summer thing. I'm like, dang, I don't know if I'm going to last 20 songs. Mm-hmm. And then I hear the guitar from You Know It, and I literally, I turned my head and looked at the, I was like, Okay. And then from then on, to me, let that's when the album starts. You can let the rest play. Mm. I, I, I didn't skip anything. I, I also don't skip when I listen, first listen. Yeah. But if I were to, if someone were to say, like, you have to listen to it this way, I would not be mad. Mm. I really enjoyed, um, yeah, You Don't uh, you don't Know Me, love that. Constant BS, love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, unloyal of, man. When the sax uh, come, when the sax when the saxophone come in, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is this is what I be saying, y'all. This is what is gonna take R and B to that next level. Mm-hmm. We're seeing what we're gonna talk about them, what they just did. We already know who we're talking about the Silks, the Sonics, <laughs> but that's where we need to go mm-hmm. if, for the next thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, um, you were asking me about the Pharrell joint. I loved it. It was good. It was. It, it's it was one of those different. things you gotta like. You gotta sit with a you little catch bit. The vibe like of it. it's it's not gonna hit immediately. It's, it's it was kind of like, huh? and then it's like oh okay. And one, once you get it, I enjoy I enjoyed good. it. The it's first good. pass, I was like oh I enjoyed it. You know what's funny? I saw someone on the timeline who <laughs> just said Pharrell ruins everything he touches. And at first I'm like oh she's trolling she's trolling. Then I looked and like went and and she was not serious like nah he he needs to hang it up he needs to retire. <laughs> She was getting ratioed. I need to double check where she's at right now. That's probably ratio, ratioed, like OD. That's pretty crazy. But aside from that, no, I really enjoyed the Pharrell thing um, Mm -hmm. with her. And Screwing to Me is is one of the top songs. Stand out. Omarion. It's just like, for me, even the words that she's saying, like screwing, like what our our folks call it, whatever she says, something, you Mm -hmm. know, referencing like, this is we going to that level of mm-hmm. like what our we doing something that our folks would what, this is how they would call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was really cool because I think sometimes I'd be forgetting that she's like kind of our age or like literally our you know age. what I'm saying. So like literally. I feel like that made me at least connect with her a little bit more because like, oh yeah like my folks say that mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it yeah um, but I this is what I this is what I be wanting from because I feel like everyone had something on here mm-hmm. if you prefer early summer like we do mm-hmm. or. You prefer the over it type summer. I feel like there's stuff on here too for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, funny, one of my homegirls, she she hit me and she was like, "Oh, did you listen to it?" I was like, "Yeah." I'm like, honestly, first five songs, leave them off. The the project starts from you. Um, you don't know me. She was like, "Really?" I felt like it was kind of sleepy. She just texted me mm-hmm. before we started, mm-hmm. talking about something just got me mad and I ran the project back. <laughs> she said it's solid. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> it's a good transition into what I want to say. Oh my god! Finish up. No, that's you. it, man. That's it. But I, I was, I was pleasantly, pri- pleasantly surprised that mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I did favorite a few songs. Yeah. Um, I will go back to those songs. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so like, I'm finally, like, finally, like, I feel like I can, in, uh, engage in the summer discourse. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, I like some, I like something on this project. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm into it. Yeah, I, I actually just. Uh, so yeah i like the first five songs aside from x for a reason i i you know i we're, we're the people who say yo you got to hear things in the context of the sequencing so, i didn't mind it in the context that, that's fair i, I I'm, I'm still not big on it um that's fine so it, like bitter it started strong and then extra reason I'm like, Bruh. and then once it gets to no love SZA smoked that she yeah SZA, she, SZA smoked it but it was a normal it was like what we expect from SZA. she delivered yeah but it wasn't like extraordinary yeah it was it yeah, was yeah, very yeah. We need that scissor. Yes. It wasn't. It did not take away yes. anything that she has. Now the only my only negativity because I gotta sprinkle in some negativity, and it's not with the music is it itself. Cons- is it criticism or a negativity? Uh, it's 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 well it's because it, it, it's not towards summer at all. It's okay. toward the discourse oh, surrounding the album, the discourse surrounding R and B these days. I, I I've spoken on it a couple episodes ago, but I hate that we can only say toxic or wholesome <laughs> or i gotta be in my bag i want to be a sad boy a sad girl the buzzword. i'm gonna text my ex if you mad oh like <laughs> summer's album got me apologizing for things i ain't even do i'm like oh yo, why are we reducing r&b like 
R&B becoming trendy is possibly the worst thing that's happened because, and while I like that, like artists like Summer, like use these Twitter words in their songs because it feels relatable. It feels like, oh, like I'm listening to, to my homies of talk. Course. The essence of R&B to an extent is being like lost because they're, tr they're trying, artists, I, I feel like they feel this pressure to, not pander, but like be so relatable yes, exactly. rather than doing what they might want to do. And th this could very well be what Summer wants. This could I very well be who Summer is. Mm -hmm. But the discourse around it, like, I, like I, 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 I saw this one tweet, like, we need Brent Fias to drop an album <laughs> to, 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 to restore the toxic balance. I'm like, shut yeah. up. Just shut up. I, I see one that said, it said, I can't wait for future prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh. Future's, future's prayer on, on breath. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that funny. Like, it, 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 it is funny, but it's like, damn. R&B oh. is so much more than what we make it in 2020, 2021. Like, yeah, from a commercial standpoint, yeah. It's like, and that's what we were saying. So on the whip here, tell them you was talking about her pen and you really thought the uh, the the songwriting was so, you know. Oh, yeah. Superb. And then I like challenged you to say, well, I, didn't, I don't know if I felt that because it, it, it gives the highest quality of just normal speech that we hear every day. Right. In a, yeah. in a music standpoint. That's why it's, I think, so palatable, so relatable to a lot of the people that we know. Yeah. Girls that listen to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? Because she really resonates with the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no, I, and I do think Summer is one of the best songwriters of. Of of the woman today, maybe maybe of women her age, like yes, uh, of, of these yeah. newer acts, because let's obviously qualify for sure. some legacy acts still exist who would write her out of uh, out of the room. Yeah. But like, I, I I hate I hate the way we discuss R and B. I cannot stand it. Like I'm 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 opening group chats like oh I can't wait to cry to this. I can't. I'm just like. And granted, yeah. the music might make you feel that way. I don't have a problem with you feeling how you feel yeah. as as but like. It's it. We talk about it so like trendy rather than just like actually analyzing the music. Like it's yeah. like I said a couple episodes ago, people don't care about vocal stacks and arrangements and backups. And which this has a all lot of that. Yeah. Oh, which bro. I was when we was talking about. I mm -hmm. was actually impressed by that. Um. It, it, well, let's say this. I was listening mm -hmm. to that. You know. Thank y'all, but thank God for you don't know me because mm -hmm. that really just opened my ears. Just like okay, mm -hmm. like let me now let me. There's something here for me. Let me really engage yeah. with it. And then I was realizing there's a lot of background. Future's prayer. <laughs> Your future's prayer is wild. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> what would that even sound like? But, but, <sighs> but yeah, long story short, now, I, I think there's a lot here even from a musical standpoint. There's mm. there's stuff here that we can talk about yeah. in, in the way we talk about stuff. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. I'm like, finally, this is what we need. And so mm. for her to be, she is a stewardess of of um of R and B mm. in that case, because you know, people are thinking of it that way. And that's the that is the music she makes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think I'm excited because she has so many eyes on, so many ears on mm -hmm. that when you get a track like You Don't Know Me, you get a track like Unloyal, mm -hmm. right? That's exposing generations to the music that I think is gonna be here forever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, I I don't hate this project. I like it yeah, actually. Yeah. No, it's very good. Summer, salute to you. People who think we hate her, die. Not playing, don't die. Playing, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hate her though. All right. um, the album surprise album that I was alluding to a couple weeks ago, Drones by Terrace Martin, My has God. hit the streets. I've had it for a few weeks now, so I've been able to sit with it. Um, but um, and I'll say I'm I'm very familiar with Terrace's production. Mm -hmm. I hadn't listened to any of his discography as an artist, right. so this was like this was just a completely new experience for me. But right from the beginning, we had turning poison into medicine. Like right from the intro, it's, it's like oh, I'm locked in. That is a very strong intro. I. It, like th this is this is such a refreshing listen mm -hmm. in this era we're in like it's so musical it's so instrumental it's nick was saying on our ride here is like this type of music d you can't put a date on there's it. no date there, there's you no date you can't outdate guitar you can't outdate live drums you can't yeah. outdate it. and also to a note to that point is that 
the mixing, and I know this is maybe mm-hmm. go over a few people's heads, but like when listening to Summer's Project, those songs are loud. Mm-hmm. They master those songs to compete with the 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 the, the, the hip hop and the rap songs that mm-hmm. are out today. So like it's just really loud. Like the mixing is really loud, mm-hmm. and you turn on drones, and it's like. It's just balanced. Yep. Perfectly is balanced. Not yep. that Jones is not. It's just they really cranked the mix. Mm-hmm. Like it's really loud mixes. Yeah. Which is cool. That that's how that music got a hit, right? Yeah. So I'm not taking away from it. I'm just saying in the comparison, it's refreshing to hear stuff that's a little more naturally mixed. A little more naturally mixed as yeah. if you were there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, it's a great project. Features include Kendrick, Ty Dolla Sign, James Fontaroy, Corday, Aaron Ray, Smino. Uh, Hit Boy, YG, Malaya. I really like the YG song. It's a different. Well, YG for me is so interesting. I was really in, bad, into him when he first dropped. As time has gone, I'm like, eh. Like his his verse on, on Divisions Project, I, I didn't like it. I was like, you don't need to be on a song like this. <laughs> this song, it's a more like laid back type vibe, and like YG has a cool rap voice. I, he I does. I, I like his rap voice. And this song, he sounds like more mature. It's not that I want him to become like a, a conscious woke rapper type right, thing. Right, and, right. Like, and like, which he ha- he has infused political messages and consciousness in his music. But this sound for him, like, I, I don't need the 2012, 2014 mustard, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. stimulus pack for YG. Like, <laughs> I, I like hearing YG on different type of stuff. And Terrace really gave him a cool canvas to, to, to paint a message on. So I, I really like the YG record. Um, but yeah, overall, really good project. Short, easy listen. Like you, you, you could put it on the background and, like you know, just kind of passively listen. But if when you're you, new to him, yeah. yeah. But if you really get into it, like it's it's, it's dope. There's and a lot there. The uh, the talent he assembled. It just it like every feature makes sense. It's 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 just it was put together very well. Exactly. Very masterful. So I have a question for you. Go ahead. How do you how do you like to have your first listen when I talk about like the setup for your first listen for mm-hmm. anything, something that you maybe you're anticipating or things like that. Do mm-hmm. you want the car test? Do you want the headphones? Do you want the the speaker in the room? Like, what do you want to get the full essence of, of a project from first listen? I, I, I'm definitely by myself. Uh, I play it off of either j- j- just, just my laptop because my laptop audio is pretty good or I'll put it on, on a Bluetooth speaker. You're missing the low end, bro. I mean, yeah, 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 that's true. Um, so, yeah, usually my first listen off my laptop or off a speaker, car test comes second. Car test is like, if I, if, if, if validation. If, yeah, like <laughs> if I didn't rock with it on the first run through and it's not hitting in the car, I'm, I'm not revisiting it at all. But the car test is a cheat code because the, that car base, that car audio is just that's like, what I'm saying. and it's it your taste. You're encased yeah, in the sound. Yeah, yeah like it, it just gives you the, that energy. It's, it's, it's a cheat code. So the first listen re- is really, really is what matters for me. Um, and I usually just do it like off my laptop by myself or Bluetooth that's speaker. Like with, the, with the summer project, I listen to all my AirPods, but you know, AirPods aren't like the best audio either. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's got, my we gotta, setup. We gotta get you some headphones, some some studio headphones. I'm a. I got some good ones. I I just hate using wired stuff now that I have AirPods. Like I'm I'm, I'm bougie. I'm sorry. I'm bougie. <laughs> that, that ain't got no basis <laughs> in nothing. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I was gonna get suggest. I'm just saying because now I'm I've realized that I've been been becoming more of a headphones listening mm-hmm. sort of just that is what I'm doing sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, where I can listen to it fully in one run mm-hmm. because there's so much. And because I, you know, I'm an artist and I understand some of the, the mixing things. I, Cause I really be listening for mixing nowadays mm-hmm. too. Um, but there's so many nuggets that you're going to miss. Like when we talk about automation and panning. So automation is like well, automating certain effects to happen on their own. Mm-hmm. But panning, for example, is like if you're ever listening to headphones and you hear something sounds in your left ear and then it moves to the right or you can hear it moving mm. and you feel that. That sort of stuff gets lost when you don't listen in certain systems, right? Mm-hmm. Um, depends on how you got your car set up and EQ and you can catch that stuff, but like I catch everything in the headphones, right? Yeah. Um, and these are studio headphones, so I love these headphones to listen to. Shout out Audio Technica. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sponsor, stay busy. Talk heavy, brother. Uh, Silk Sonic third single, "Smoking Out the Window." Hard. I I I, I think Silk Sonic needed that. Um, yes. Yeah. You know my my feelings on skate have been very well articulated. 
on this podcast and smoking out the window i'm, I'm not gonna say it's a leave the door open part two because they're not exactly the same right. song but it's more along that vein and that's what the people want from silk sonic like leave the door open hit took off and <laughs> people were like all right like if this is what we're getting ready for bet bet and then skate comes and it's like ah, you skated to the right like, i don't know about that <laughs> So smoking out the windows a lot more in that vein. Very strong though. Very very strong. It's I, like the I, opposite side of leave the door open too. Yeah, so leave the door open's more tender and loving. This mm-hmm. one's more like, man, you got me out here really feeling like down. I'm down yeah. bad. Like, mm-hmm. Oh man, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. This yeah. just uh, with their records is just always so much to unpack. Yep. It's just it's amazing, man. Yeah, hundred percent. So strong. I'm looking forward to the album. Um, Definitely, What's definitely. The date on that, the twelfth, twelfth, November twelfth. Oh wow! Um, so there yeah, coming up soon, coming up soon. Silk Sonic, you better not fold, boys. You better not fold. I don't think they're gonna fold. I, I don't think so. I'm, yeah, I don't think so either. Um, How many songs do you think are gonna be? Twelve. I would pray it's ten. Ten, ten to twelve. Ten to twelve. I'm, I'm, I'm interested if they have any features too. Um, Bootsy is supposed to be narrating it. Yeah, yeah. So Bootsy will be all over it. Mm-hmm. I don't I would, know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, Travis Scott dropped a two pack escape plan and mafia. Um, Travis, <laughs> Travis Scott is he seeing the way he has declined in quality as a lyricist from Astro World to now is alarming. You know, he's he's promoting this upcoming album, album Utopia, whatever, and it's like, I'm not optimistic going into it. You, like, it, Travis and Kanye are very similar in that the production is always is always going to be great. Always. Okay. The beats a- is crazy. Always going to be great. That's not enough. Yeah. Good, good beats are not enough. There's a lot of good beats out here. We hear hundreds of good beats every week. Good beats are not enough. The, the, the you know Travis he's mastered the the auto tune, the voice, the manipulation, all that. Yeah, it's cool, but you're not saying nothing. On Astro World, you had bars. On Rodeo, you had bars. On Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight, you had bars. It was hungry, yeah. You, he's. I, I was hunger. I think it's hunger. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, like, I, it just doesn't feel like he's as invested. It, it like music to him is just kind of like. I'm going to do this so I stay relevant to people and then they care when I do a McDonald's collab or they care when I do a foot Fortnite collab or they care when I put out my next shoe. Like, I, it just doesn't feel like music is, is his priority, which is okay. I'm happy for all the success that he has, but I don't want my seconds that I can't get back wasted listening to <laughs> these songs. And he had J. Cole on Mafia and it was a waste of a J. Cole feature. It's so crazy. You played it. I didn't even, I was like, wait, wait, Cole was on that? Yeah. And I didn't like, realize. It, 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 <sighs> Maybe I was I was half listening, y'all. I know Cold Voice, but I was half listening. I'm just uh, Travis. You know, man. We were talking how the, there was a time where the, that fourth spot after J- Drake, Cole, Kendrick was yours, snatching it back like <laughs> like Ti did, did to Shorty and ATO. Revoked. Snatching that back. It's it, it, it. No, no, man. No, it's it's it's. So not who get that spot? Future. Okay, show Future your work. Hendrix. Show your work. <laughs> I mean, to Future's 2014 playing. and 2015 alone, Monster DS2, What a Time to Be Alive, 56 Nights, like that's that that just just goes without saying. But if you want to go further than that, 2017, Future Hendrix back to back, both number one within two weeks. Super slimy that year, Young Thug. 2018, you want to go 2018? He put out Beast Mode two. Um, he was on King's Dead with Kendrick and J Rock. 2019, Wizard, Save Me, um, like. 2020 high off life wasn't that good but future is just he, he he's he's consistent <laughs> he has a high clip he's got Solid he's got clip. the consistency he's got the quality he's got the commercial appeal he's got the versatility he gives you the r&b he gives you the rap he don't give on no r&b he does there ain't no r&b dog he gives R H- hendrix come on hendrix is, a, is, is it's not don't R-Mind. it's his his R-Mind. brand of r&b our mind it's his brand of r&b bro <laughs> like we, yo, we, we, we we're not about to start this we're not, we're not about to <laughs> it's do not this. r&b future Stop that. future future it's quite literally labeled that it can be his, labeled. his it can projects be labeled are quite literally it can, labeled it can R&B be labeled soul however projects. it needs to be labeled it doesn't make, we just talked about r&b that, we what did. we just talked about is r&b Correct, but there, but there are sub genres within R and B. And what's there, future? Future there, sub-genre. there are other lanes within R and B. I mean, it's definitely future R and B is definitely more of the trap. 
it's trap infused type R and B, but he sings. But that says, like I've said before, <laughs> just because someone <laughs> sings does not make it R and B. Oh, just mm. because they sung on a song does not make it R and B. And I know there's people listening, like, "Yep, that's right, that's right." Future, future has has made and makes R and B music, and you know. Anyways, yeah. well, thanks so, y'all. That's this episode. But of anyways, Busy. back to I'm Travis. Like, yeah, you're. Um, yeah, you. I I don't really know what to say, man. It's just it's it, it's it's not giving. <laughs> it's not it, giving. It's taking more than it's giving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I was gonna say though before is like I, I've said we said this last time. It's like I was very concerned after the larger than life run of Astro World. It was like two years yeah. after, right? Yep. Um, just everything was Astro World. I was very concerned. It's like, where is he gonna go from here? Like, this is his magnum opus. I don't know if he could ever, like, ever go higher than this because of just the moment that it was, the quality of the music. I mean, dude, you got Stevie, you got Stevie on a song. James Blake, Frank James, Ocean. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just it seemed like that that album. I don't know how he could top Astro World. And so then when I heard that Utopia was the next thing. I was just like, but wait, ain't that Astro World is like creating a I'm just like, you did that already. And this is why I think I'm just curious of like where artists are nowadays. I don't know if artists are so concerned with just being trying to be the best again, right? Mm. Or trying to reinvent. And that's why people mm. always try to hate Drake. How do you think he stayed on top for ten years or whatever it is? Because the man is reinventing every single time, mm -hmm. trying new things. And he gets, yeah. you know, he gets uh rocked for for trying to do new things but mm -hmm. i mean that's why he's still here yeah so yeah you know travis i don't uh, i would hope that he has i would like to see him try something new yeah i mean I, it just doesn't feel like he feels any pressure it doesn't feel like he feels like there's anyone who can take his spot 16 year old kids in iowa gonna eat it up anyway. yeah like and, and that, that, that's a big thing one of my big issues with music nowadays is the lack of competition it doesn't feel like people are trying to be better than anyone else and i think that pressure leads to better stuff and also it's like travis just doesn't like we don't really get much of him like i i, I think i don't think he'll ever top astro world but i think something that would please people more is if he gave us more relatable content his his bars really talk about the same stuff drugs raging we 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 at the party all that and like that that's that's cool but like coffee bean the closer on astral world i love that because that felt so personal and i was like oh Tra travis can do this he has this okay cool so i would like more of that i just don't know if he's at the place where he feels he needs to give that and maybe that's that's our disconnect so yeah i don't know travis i i could wait for another project man i'll i'll, I'll keep running up astral world though I'll that's keep running up hard astral world. it's great hard uh lastly real quick because this was just quite a i didn't even get to check it out i'm tight yeah uh kanye west was on drink champs with nori um two and a half hour interview <laughs> and you know it's if for those of you who remember season one when we talked about drake's rap radar interview which is also two and a half hours and how i watched that multiple times i'll still go back to it kanye drink champs was very difficult to get through it was a lot of kanye be saying a lot but it don't be he but he don't be saying nothing and saying expected a lot. to hit he expected to be very like profound and it don't hit yeah like i, I it, like if if the things he says make sense to him then great but there was just a lot of words put together with Same no word. real rhyme or reason um the big takeaways from this is he called just blaze a copycat which like just blaze a legendary producer i don't know what I don't, I don't. I don't get that's, what the. That's interesting that he yeah. would say Just Blaze copy him because I feel like their sounds are so different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, they were. I mean, they were in the same. They were in the same sessions around mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah, when they're both trying to come up. So like that makes sense. But I that I, wouldn't I don't. shock me that he says that. But like in the sounds, like you can definitely. Oh, that's a Yay beat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a Just Blaze beat. Mm -hmm. Like for sure, if yeah. you put one on one, two, you know, two of them stacked up. Yeah. Yeah, but the biggest the biggest thing was his comments on Big Sean and John Legend. Now he said on his tombstone, mm. "I deserve to be here because I signed Big Sean. That's the worst thing I've ever done." Ooh. And that's he, wild. he takes issue with Big Sean and John Legend because they spoke out about him during his presidential run. And to that, I say, 
if you were aware of yourself, you would completely understand why they spoke out against you trying to be president. They should have just let it be. Cause like, uh, who was taking Kanye serious anyway? Yeah, I, I don't. Like, that's it's. <sighs> dude is weird, but like, big to say, big, signing Big Sean's yes. the worst thing you ever done. Big Sean is probably the most commercially viable artist you've ever signed. Yeah. Like he's what, what, what regardless of how people feel about him now, because I've lost interest in Big Sean, but you can't yeah. deny his output from his early finally famous days up till now. He's still a relevant rapper. He's still he still relevant, gets yeah. a bunch of placements. He's he's on at least one, one to two big songs a year. Like I don't I I don't get how that would be the worst thing that you've ever done. Like let's like if we looked at your good music roster, he's literally the probably the most commercially successful. I mean, yeah. Push has done his thing throughout his career. Tiana Taylor's done her thing, but hasn't hit that level. Like yeah. I don't, and it's funny too. Big Sean saw the, the 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 comments and he posted a tweet with pictures of Kanye. He was like, "Yo, I just saw you a couple of days ago, and like the, the energy was good. You ain't have nothing to say about about me then." It's like, wow, man, this man is just he's that's crazy. He's off his rocker, and <laughs> that's that's actually kind of sad. He and there is these sheep. On the timeline, these Kanye sheep, <laughs> they be like, I don't understand why y'all be watching Kanye stuff just to say bad things about him. It's like, it's, like it's, we it's don't like, have to. It's like we're we're not allowed to critique the their goat when y'all be critiquing every like. Imagine me being like, how dare y'all listen to the Drake album and say bad things about it? Well, why would you even do that? Like, no, like. I'm I'm gonna watch something like I'm 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 gonna give Kanye a chance. I thought if if there was anywhere he might be honest, it was drink champs with Nori after drinking, right? Drinking up, he smoked a blood on TV. I don't know, like I was like, yo, maybe maybe he, he gonna have something to say. No, <laughs> it was it was it was not worth my time, you know. But you know, for those who enjoyed it, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, it's it's cool to see him do press, but it's it <laughs> just was not interesting. Did not offer anything. That's not very kind, Kanye. He's a bozo. <laughs> Big bozo. <laughs> but all this talking, thirst, the thirst is upon us. So what are you sipping on, good sir? I'm actually sipping on some some matcha today. I need it. Um, okay. My energy is waning. Matcha but, be hidden. Yeah, so call me the matcha magistrate for today. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So anyways, y'all... Um, yeah, get you some matcha. This is hitting. Uh, but so I'm going to do a light responsible revisit from last week um, for the half and half. We were talking about Audius, the streaming service, who's aiming to add significant revenue streams to artists by Tara and C. Mahadevan from Complex. So I wanted to bring this conversation just to make a more generalized discussion on NFTs and crypto and kind of where that's pushing the industry. I've been I've taken some time this week to kind of look past the article and just look at just different uh, literature about what you know. Learn a little bit more about NFTs. Learn more about the blockchain. Learn more about how the whole crypto world is going to function, and especially within like how we're talking about its application to artistry and the entertainment industry. So, I mean, as I look and more and more I look, the evidence just continually points that if y'all ain't involved in crypto, and I'm looking into the camera. If you're not involved in crypto as a normal person. You should probably think about it. You should probably look into it because the way in which this whole metaverse thing is happening with Facebook or now <laughs> not Facebook, but just a lot of companies are making that push and that rush involving themselves in the crypto space. I don't see any this. This feels next. This mm -hmm. is like if you look at the the research, if you look at what's going on, like this is next. And so don't be one of those people that's like, well, oh, that, you know, I'm, I missed that train or I'm not a this person. I'm not a, that person like I really feel every everything has been going digital and it's only going to go more digital because once AR and this metaverse and all that stuff becomes really realistic and really like accessible, that's the only thing right now is that it's not built into all the tech that we have. Mm -hmm. But once it gets built into all the tech that we have, that's going to be something that where it's like it's going to be unavoidable. So we're talking about another um a dope dude we saw Ill Mind shout mm -hmm. out Ill Mind yeah when we went to his his podcast episode what he's been doing recently I don't know if you've even seen what he's been doing recently. He has built, remember he used to do those sessions, those like black chat sessions, yep. not black sessions, but um, I forget what it's called, black something sessions, mm -hmm. where he basically, maybe it was called black sessions, whatever, mm -hmm. where he would invite artists to come through, they come play their music in a studio, he'd give them critiques, whatever. 
So he's been doing that stuff. He's been going on Twitch streaming. Twitch is another one too, y'all. Mm-hmm. Twitch, I know you're not a video gamer, but it's gonna be more than that yeah. soon. It Amazon, is more than that. You know what I'm saying? It's what I'm saying. It's gonna be even more and more. Obviously, yeah. video games dominates it, but like yeah. music is there, producing is there. Like I'm sure talk shows are gonna be there soon. Food is gonna be there soon. All these other things. Like these are the the newer. This is the next age and next wave of social media of digital engagement. So Illmind is been doing these experiences where he built like a virtual sort of session mm. where people like create an avatar, they go into this like virtual world and they do the sessions. T minus was a part of the session, mm. um, beat critiques, they do all this sort of stuff. And it's just like, wow, this is what ahead of the curve is looking like. So when we're talking about NFTs and we talk about a streaming service that is allowing you to, you know, it has its own coin, um, you know, it's lit on the blockchain. So the blockchain of course is basically uh, digital, uh, it's like a digital ledger uh, that is not owned by one entity. It, it's kind of owned and managed by everybody, um, and so anyone can can look at at the, at the ledger, and so that it basically cre- it decentralizes these systems. So the application for artists and for creatives and any sort of thing, if you sell anything, is that you now can create an NFT out of anything. We can make an NFT out of this episode. And sell five of them. You hear what you saw? What uh, Miss? I know you don't like to say his name, but Tory. You saw what Tory did? Tory who? Tory Lanes. Here you no, go. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Talk. Well, what he did with an <laughs> NFT? He sold an NFT. He did this thing. Uh, he sold them like for a dollar, mm. and he had a million copies because you could select how many you want to put out. Mm-hmm. He put a million out and made a million dollars in like fifty-seven seconds. Mm. So this is the point of that artist. Need it for the them lawyer fees, man. Hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Dog is facing some real time. Yeah, yikes. But anyways, so the, my all my point is to say is that like soon it's going to be big artists doing it. Companies are getting involved. Like mm. if you're an artist and you haven't explored and understood what it is, I think you should take the time to do so. If you're creative, if you make anything, you should really take the time. If you're a normal person. You should really take the time to look at and see what an NFT is, right? Because I think very soon it's going to be much more normalized as crypto and all that stuff gets normalized. So that's just my my word to the wise mm-hmm. um, in what I've been looking at this week. So that's my responsible revisit Good. as the matcha magistrate. There you go. When was the last time you heard the word magistrate? Uh, probably recently. Probably teaching my students like in one of their books they'd be reading they be reading like U.S. history stuff, all that. So is that is that magistrate? Magistrate has to do with like civil something, like it, it's something of that yeah, nature. I've probably seen it <laughs> in the last few weeks. Let's jump into our employee of the month, our new employee of the month. Want to give it up to the guy Rob Markman. Clap it up for Rob Markman, yes, sir. Rob Markman, if you do not know him, you you, you should you, know him. You ain't done your hip hop history. He's That's the VP of Content Strategy at Genius, former senior hip hop editor at MTV, deputy editor at XXL, and he is a rapper. He's put out projects Right to Dream in 2017, It's Too Late at the Wake 2019, and If You Don't, You'll Regret It 2021. Talented lyricist, you know. I it's dope to see journalists who grew up as Hip hop lovers transition into being artists. Call Lamar's put out uh, music recently as well, um, and yeah, Rob's Rob's good. Rob Rob's a solid rapper. I had the chance to interview him last year. Uh, we had a really great conversation. He's got a great perspective on on the industry. And, you know, he's he's a bit older. He's been around, so he's he's seen it all. And uh, oh, geez. he's still very tapped in. You know, you've seen him do the show for the record on Genius. Mm-hmm. You've seen him bring people together for different music roundtable discussions and host genius level i went to futures and t-pain so um yeah rob rob's dope super dope dude great uh, i don't know anyone with bad things to say about him if you do you're probably a hater so shout out to our employee of the month rob markman yes sir snaps and claps let's jump into the slide deck Uh, the best song wasn't the single but you weren't either Mm-hmm. So, the dare high. I'll go with mine first. Uh, I was put on to this song uh, this week by our good friends Megan and Edgar. So this is "Wildfires" by Salt, produced by Inflow. I just hold yep, on. I Inflo. just did something with Inflow. Didn't wasn't my slide last week? Inflow. I don't. It, it was uh, Little Woman. Or no, it Lil was. Sims. It was. Inflow produced my slide oh, last, look last at that. week. Oh, I'm like, I see Inflow. Go, go ahead. 
That's, that's salt? Uh, salt, yes, salt. yes, yes. Wildfires by salt. Um, Spelled like Saul, like S- Paul yeah. Saul. Yeah, Saul with a T at the end, or salt with a U between the A and the L. However, however it makes sense to you to get that spell. Why did you pick salt? Hmm? What 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 got you about salt? Wildfires by salt. Literally, Megan Edgar told me, listen to music. I, I trusted their, their ears. I played it in the car, and it was hidden. I was like, I, I, I just, I, I like this. I like how it makes me feel. It gave that 60s vibe. Yeah, the yeah. 60s pocket, for sure. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like something, like, you would probably hear at, like, a white party. But, like, this, one of them joints that you'd be like, okay, like, this is dope. Like, you what know. What do you mean at a white party? But I don't know. It, 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 it just gives me, like, college white party vibes. But, oh but, 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 but something that I would like to nah, hear at see, a white I want, party I want a, I want more space to be created for I don't know what salt look like Me neither But, but if salt is of melanation Yeah, no, and I, I, I didn't I didn't mean that as an insult It's just kind of like, like I don't know I, It just immediately took me to like Me being in like Kai-Fi's party room And g- going through the <laughs> Stacy's mom And all those other songs And be like, hi, oh, and then hearing this is like, oh, okay, this is dope Again, But not not trying to assume that this person is is, is of the of the Caucasian. Now see, now I gotta look. Yeah, right, right. You know, I and please, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take me seriously. Um, but yeah, it, it was just it was the vibe that I got. It's a musical group, multiple people, uh, British music collective. Hmm. I I assume they were British because mm-hmm. of um, Inflow. I think Inflow is British yeah. producer. Yeah, but so, all that to say, I just really like the song, and you know, when I really like something, I, I want to bring it here to y'all. Pardon me and my lack of politically yeah. correctness. I, I guess get your culture up, <laughs> uncultured. Uh, what did you bring for us, sir? So I've been having a moment. I've played this brother stuff on here a few times, and the other day I was driving to the airport to pick up my roommate, and I played this project again because I've run this project before. But I was like, do I really know it? Like I know the songs that I like on it, but did I really know it? And I ran the project again, and and I was just shocked about how good this man really is. Mm -hmm. And I think he, I don't know what it is in the timing or something like that, um, but I really hope that there's going to be a moment where he can just cut through and Mm -hmm. everyone can really appreciate the greatness that is Ro James. Mm -hmm. So this is Slow Down by Ro James featuring Masego, produced by Jay Keller, mixed by our friend, Mr. Jeff Jackson. Shout out, Jeff. Don't believe in what they tell me But only what I see I'm searching for the truth in something outside 
with the truth that lied to me Oh, we all chasing waterfalls Drowning in the seas we ain't used to Tread light in the life you ain't used to Everything you do coming back to you To slow down She love a Lambo, she love a Rambo yeah. On the road, living reckless Hey mama, she couldn't afford a car named my daughter Alexis Tesla's best friend She love me cause I collect them And I can never tie it down Cause she can never slow, slow, slow down, down. Yeah. Slow down, oh baby Baby, don't rush a good thing Slow down Even with the technical difficulties, that's that's a heater. That's a heater. And I, I agree with you on the Road James cutting through thing. I, I was introduced to him summer sixteen actually. I think Vinny put me on like to his song Permission. Permission. With permission. Your permission. So I heard it and I was like, Oh, this is dope. And naturally when you hear a dope song by artists, you listen to them. I was like, Yo, he's really good. Like, whoa. And then so I kind of just didn't really listen to him after that And then when he dropped uh, his most recent project uh, That this song is on uh, Was Mantic. Mantic. Mantic Mantic He dropped that This is a 2020 joint 2020 with Touchy Feely Too Much with Miguel of course uh, I've like, run that song regularly It is it, It's funny too Because when I first heard Too Much I was like oh this is good And then like as like like You you were obsessed with it for a while So <laughs> oh, like geez. anytime we would be in the car together It would come on I was like oh whoa Now nah, this record is like Crazy. nuts <laughs> Like I was going through my IG story archive and like right. we were playing it in the studio at levels one day like over and over. I was like, yo, what this? What is this? This is like it's a record, bro. very good. So yeah, Row is like super super dope. And I mean like it's a conversation I was actually having with like Edgar and all of them at when we were at dinner. Like we were talking about the Xavier Omar situation and how like R and B artists can be super dope. And just not cut through because, like, the, maybe they're not the priority at their label, or maybe they're not as visible or as marketable. It's like with Road James' talent, he should be. One. I want him to have the the same. He could have the same level as a Lucky, right? Mm -hmm. So far as the way it's just like he has his own lane. Too. Mm -hmm. He can be in his own space and, yeah. and just man, because he has all the things. He mm -hmm. has the actual vocals. He got the the uh, the swag. He got the the look. He got. He just has all of the things and i'm mm -hmm. just like man like i want to see him up here with it yeah you know uh so shout out ro james ro james is actually at the show remember at the paper box that yeah, day up at the stage yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so no, i remember shout out ro james I remember the guy you know you, you gotta um, pick with him and everything yeah. <laughs> he, he was like yo we should get in the studio i was like when, when you and ro get in the studio <laughs> man yeah so that was the guy shout out ro. So, yeah, uh, you all can enjoy all those slides and our previous slides on the Stay Busy Slide Deck playlist on all platforms. Hit the link tree in our IG or Twitter bios. Artists, if you would like us, artists or listeners, if you would like a slide added to the deck, hit us at Stay Busy Pod on IG and Twitter or email us at staybusypod at gmail.com. Are you ready for the board meeting, good sir? I am prepared. I am prepared. So this board meeting stems from our experiences, as we said, you know, attending uh, Reggie Becton and Grace Weber's show at Elsewhere in Brooklyn. Uh, live music, man. It, I missed it. Live, yes, yes. This year, I've been able to see Wizkid, J. Cole, mm -hmm. um, and obviously Reggie and Grace Weber. Did I see another show. I don't know. I might have. I might be forgetting. But it's it's so good to be back in that environment in that space because that from like 2018 to early 2020 you and i we was at shows bro like shows. we saw her in 2018 About four or five times bryson came out to with her that was when we first saw tone stith too tone, tone stith opened for her yes and we was like yo he's he's up next it and was brie and tone yeah brie steves, and brie steves of brie course steves. yes Shut yes, up, yes. Brie um we also we, we went to that what was that what was that the joint that jermaine per performed at it was oh, it um, was the ascap show ascap show yeah Bree steves uh, was there too so what's the so 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 what's the, sobs yes sobs yeah um in soho that's what i was like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's just it's it, uh, for me attending a show has has for me has shown me 
how viable an artist truly is. That's a fact. Because we can we can see the social media discourse, we can see the numbers, you can see all that stuff. But when you go and you see them live, and the 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 greatness transcends from your Spotify algorithms to a live setting. Yeah. When there are no gimmicks, like you know, nowadays they do have the auto tune you can use live and all that stuff. But really, like, there's there's, there's no hiding. You can't. There's there's no hiding. So, you know, I was at Rolling Loud 2019, and Tyga, Tyga surprised the fuck out of me. And not, <laughs> not that I thought he was a bad artist, but it's like. Tyga, man, it's whatever. <laughs> he like, didn't expect Tyga much. had his run. Yeah, he got up there and he smoked that stage. His breath control was incredible for me. I'm always really impressed by artists who rapped their records without needing the backup you track. Don't, come on, man, without you don't the backup track. And you know, in, in some ways, I get it. You know, if 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 you can't hit. Like certain ad libs or certain backup ad libs in there, all that yeah, like you know certain things like that's fine. But I am most impressed when an artist gets up there, plays just the beat and spits the whole thing, and brings the same energy, all all the nuances and then the little bells and whistles that we like, like all that stuff. So Tiger really, really surprised me, and the way he commanded the crowd. And it's like if you look at his discography, he's got hits on hits on hits. Like Tiger's, Tiger's not. I, I wouldn't say he's slept on, but because of his more recent perception in media, people forget Tyga was that guy, 2010 that to 20, 2012, 2013. Him. Like he was, he he was big, big Himothy. So, um, Himothy. Yeah. <laughs> so, Himothy. um, what what's what, what's the best show you've ever attended? <sighs> best, yeah, Ooh. best, my most enjoyable, favorite. Okay, I'll say for a moment for me, like. So for my people, it's like I have a few people that have this stuff to cross off my list so far as mm. like artists that I need to see live or whatever. Mm. Um, I've seen, you know, John Legend. I saw him at the Hollywood Bowl. Mm. I'll never forget that. Uh, it was a, it was a moment for me because John, you know, is up here for me. Mm. And so seeing him live, hearing the just that's when you when you see and experience somebody's voice in person and it's an amphitheater style, style style venue so the vo the way the voice carries and resonates and just you know he was he did all of me he did all his stuff but it was just him and piano and then he had a big band and everything like it was dope it was fire setup was great but it was a moment because i was like this man is actually unbelievable yeah sounds just like the record if not better live um it was amazing ryan leslie i've seen him a few times <laughs> That's one of my heroes, like heroes. Shout out Ryan. Shout out everybody on the team. Um, I saw him when I was in high school. Someone when I was in high school, he came to California. Mm -hmm. I saw him at the Yost Theater. I'll never forget the, the Yost Theater in Santa Ana. I saw him. The show was just immaculate. I knew every word of every song, so <laughs> it was it was really especially hidden for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then most recently, I was working at his. I worked at his. Uh, 10th anniversary show yeah um i was there that was yeah dope. that was a fantastic show yeah. i mean the guy just just be going so i've loved those shows so funny enough i was looking at this earlier when we were preparing mm -hmm. so today is well i'll say y'all are hearing this on november 7th mm -hmm. i believe so yes so this will have released on november 7th yeah today is november 5th yeah this is the day 17 years ago when i went to my first concert ever really who, who was it so it's going to be an artist you, that no one will know. So my dad brought me along. It was at the Cerritos Performing Arts Center in California. Mm -hmm. It was a show. Um, one of his friends, my dad is a saxophonist for those who don't know. So one of his friends was playing by a guy by the name of Huge Groove, sat smooth jazz saxophonist. He was playing set. So I went to him. It was him. And then the act that went after him was this lady by the name of Angelique Kidjo. Mm -hmm. She's like a goat in the Afro world like world music she uh i think she's i believe she's from benin or togo she's from one of the two countries mm -hmm. um and she's she's like a goat in that sense so like that was like one of my first concerts i've ever been but i was crazy because i remember it was two days before my dad's 50th birthday party so <laughs> this is how i remember it so i was just i, I noticed that when we were eating out yeah i was, like, oh, I was wow. wondering why, why you asked like 17 years ago i was like when, when, when did yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so that that is why so mm -hmm. Um, you, you, I, do you remember your first show ever? I actually, so my first like time seeing a big artist was college Home, homecoming Cornell third eye blind. My freshman third eye year. Blind. Do third you know eye any, blind. Did you know their song? I did not. Okay. I like, 
I uh, until I got there and they did w- their biggest one. I, f- I forget the name of it, but it, it was. I was like, oh, I, I've heard this before. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I didn't know any of it. I honestly went just because m- my my friends were going, people nice. on my floor were going. We pregame together, but it was it was an enjoyable show. My first rap show then would be my first rap show. Did I see anyone at Cornell after Third Eye Blind? I don't think so. So it probably. I guess it would have been Thug for um for you, you know when Cornell would do would do that 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 show in April. Yeah. Yeah. The spring joint. They they brought Thug my junior year. So I No. Th- Luda. Luda. Slope Day. Yes. Slope Luda, Day I Luda. Think Luda was my first rap act. Yeah. Yeah. And like that, notable rap act. And it was dope too, because I grew up on Luda. I, I knew on, all man. his stuff, catching the dubs on the slope cup, man. <laughs> women in the caviar. You know, don't he, block this YouTube. Huh? I was just saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Me you know, Luda was definitely a little problematic, but for me, just what's he though? What's he being Luda? Right. I right. think people were offended because they didn't get it. Yeah. Right. 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 Problematic to other people. For me, it was like, oh, that's funny. Like it was regular. <laughs> it, was it, it was a very regular. Like it's what you expect. Luda wasn't out there. At, people was throwing stuff, and he checked the audience, yeah. and people got all offended. And yeah. Cornell sent out this big old email talking yeah. about he doesn't represent our values, and you know, yeah. and then Slope Day went to. Just went down from there. And they brought Chance Oof. the next year. And it was like kind of around his run, too. It was yeah. really, it was pre-coloring book. Right it was before. Surf. Yeah. It was Surf, the album that album came out. Yeah. It was that pre-coloring book. Summer. Right. But uh, it was just not what you wanted to hear on Slope. No. No. You, I, I, I we think we be, all wanted Future. We all wanted all, Future. <laughs> talk about. We um, were we were begging for Future. future that, future's yeah. Prayer. Can we yeah. name the episode? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we can. We can name this episode Future's, future's Prayer. prayer. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I so yeah, Third Eye Blind was my first official show, which is very funny to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, you know what? The Every, every time we would go to Hope Benefit, Q's, like, uh, the first one was pa- Party Next Door. He shocked me. Party was good. Bro. Party was dope, bro. So, yo, Party was if dope. If y'all haven't seen Party live, he, he surprised me. Dude had a backpack on, was mm-hmm. just kind of walking around, but like was singing, like hitting yeah. the notes. It runs was clean. I'm like, yeah. I, I was shocked because I didn't expect much because you mm-hmm. hear the, you know, the the auto tune and that sound when he's in his recorded stuff. But I mean, dude was actually singing. I yeah. was shocked. Yeah, yeah. Shocked. Yeah. Who I, else has shocked you that they were just like, whoa, like, dang, ooh. they made good. Other than Tyga. <laughs> you know, I'll say I saw YG. Yeah, YG was it Fourth of July? What was it? It was one of them days, Memorial, something, Veteran, something yeah. or the other. Something oh, that Brooklyn Mirage. What day? What oh was yeah, that? yeah. You went to Duce Palooza, right? That's yeah. exactly what day was that? That was I think Memorial? it was Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, because we just because we went to Cornell grad. And exactly, then we came back. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, at Duce and YG. One, the first shock, he was on time. Mm. Like when I say <laughs> on time, he was on time. Wow. Boom. Can't, did the whole set just killed it? Not mm. stumbling, no words, everything. I'm like, dang, like dudes really perform. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know where we get in our mind that these. Uh, maybe it's because of their persona, and we just think they wouldn't care. I think they're too cool for school mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's like some of these rappers that you know people try to, I guess, write off in certain ways, like really be paying attention to the craft. And yeah. Artists in general, not just rappers, but yeah. like, a lot of these people really be paying attention to the craft and like giving it everything. YG strikes me as a type who makes his music for performance as well. Yeah. Like you can tell when certain songs are made. Like, oh, th- th- that's gonna go off live. You can just know. It's like he's he's he's, he's got those records. Like I, w- I would love to see a YG show. I don't think I've seen him live. But people who surprised me, uh, Lil Baby. Honestly, I saw him. Where? Uh, when did I see him? Uh, he he was at Day in Vegas. I feel like I saw him before Day in Vegas though. But um, I just. I don't know what I expected, but his his energy, his breath control, That's like shocking. He 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 was dope. He was dope, and like his his songs are obviously for that setting. Very aggressive beats, you know, eight oh eights, all that. Like it was he he was he was really dope. Migos surprised me too. Migos was in Vegas. Like they they were they were really good. They put on a good show. Nav Nav had the crowd going crazy. I was annoying. I was very and like I'm like. I, I'm genuinely a Nav fan, but like I kind of, oh, oh, but, but I overdo it to mess oh, with, to mess with purpose, people. On purpose. <laughs> but I, I was there, like when it was time for Nav set, the crowd like all shifted t- yeah. to that stage, and they they knew every single word to every song. And it's like just goes to show, like the people who are memes on Twitter, the people who we joke on, are put put on some of the best shows, and people That's love crazy. them. Um, of the big three headed dragon, who have you seen? 
I've seen all of them. I, I saw I Drake. I haven't seen Kendrick. Yeah, I, I only saw Kendrick. Do I it. haven't seen Drake either. But Cole? What? Yeah, Cole. What? Yeah. I've seen I've seen Cole now do a a tour set for his own tour. I saw him do a festival set at uh, Day in Vegas, and then I saw him do a party set at that J. Cole Day party that I went to the day the day before Revenge of the Dreamers came out. And Cole's incredible live. Like He's unreal. He's He's actually like it's like whoa. Like he, he got up there for his party with a plaid shirt on, just looked like he was chilling. He's like, Yo, I'm gonna just do some records for y'all. He did the London middle child. He did, you know, work out his older joints. And like, he just, he just snaps right into performance. Of mode. course. Like the, the most recent show I saw him at Barclays for obviously the off season and not like he, he's, he's such a trained performer. He knows which lines people are going to scream out. Of course. So he just like, he pauses and lets people like, it's the, it's, it's the line in 95 South, put the M on your head. You, you, you Luigi brother now, like yeah. we all just screamed and he You're just, Luigi brother he now. just, it was, it was great. Um, Drake, I saw do a party set and then I saw him do, I, I went to his, uh, his tour for Scorpion with Migos. That was I mean, Drake is obviously, yeah, I know Drake is my guy, and I'd been waiting to see him for forever. And he, when he spoke in the Rap Radar interview about how much attention and detail he's put into becoming a better performer, mm-hmm. that show showed it. Like, he was sprinting across the stage. Like, the the, 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 the songs he chose to do, it's like a, a lot of my, my favorite Drake songs are more of the B-sides, deep cuts, but when you get in that setting, that arena, and... The, the visuals with the with the yellow Ferrari yeah. all yeah, in there yeah. and, and like the scorpion coming out of the stage like it's like yo I'm not mad I'm I'm singing along to God's plan and zero to one hundred okay, granted like they're good they're not my favorite Drake songs right, right, but, right. but but they're great songs and in that environment they go off and um so yeah saw Drake Kendrick I saw do a festival set at Day in Vegas it was like it, it was good I I. I, I, I want to see Kendrick at his own show because f- festival sets are different than like normal sets. Like Kendrick obviously got an hour because right. he, he was a headliner, but I don't know. There was just something off. People thought he, he like had a clone up there. People thought it wasn't him. I, was like, I, I don't, I don't think it was a clone. I just, I don't know. It was just weird. Like say. having him headline also when he didn't have any new music out, it was, it was just, it was an interesting choice for me. I mean, it was day in Vegas's first, like I'm time doing it, he could headline with no new music. Yeah, out. Right, of course, of course, but I don't know. Like I, I have to see Kendrick again. I, it, it was good. I enjoyed it. Like it's just the novelty of it. Seeing it, it was like, oh shit, I'm seeing Kendrick Lamar. Dope. Right. But yeah, it, like Drake and Ken Cole, I enjoyed more. Than, I seen. Than um, speaking of Terrace, I seen Terrace mm-hmm. with him, his dad. He did like a trio situation. Him, his dad, his dad's name Curly. He plays drums, mm-hmm. and then he had like, an organist, and he was playing sax and, and keys. Mm-hmm. Terrace was playing Saxon Keys and singing and whatnot. And I saw him at Blue Note. That was unbelievable. Mm. Like, amazing. I got videos on my phone. I'm going to show you. But he, Terrace is, you know, he's out of here. He's mm-hmm. one of those guys for me. Um, I saw Robert Glasper. Mm. Glasper is one of those people for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen him a few times, like, just in different contexts. I've seen Music Soul Child. I would love that to was see huge music. for me. That was big. Uh, music is one of my guys, Uncle Music. <laughs> and. Shout out to the just the free shows that be in New York, like the free, the concert series. I've seen a lot of people that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen, uh, I saw Wizkid. Yeah. Uh, the music is, is, is what creates it. it. As a performer, he's whatever to me. I, I was going to say. Truth, I, like being very honest, he's just like normal. I was a disappointed. Uh, he, he also got mad, so he only did like 20 minutes and then left early. Like he was like cursing someone out in the, in the front and then he left early. I was like, yo, this is disappointing. Like, nah, I would, uh, yeah, I don't know. Disappointing. The music was crazy. The, the yeah. showing, the, the most beautiful showing. If New York has ever offered me, thank you, New York, for that. <laughs> um, Wizkid concert, amazing. And hers is dope, live. Hers, um, yeah. We, I, we've seen her so many times. Majid, I've seen Majid. Majid yeah. by myself. Brooklyn Steel is my... What's your favorite New York venue? Um, Brooklyn Steel would be one of them. Um, i also seen Pac live. I saw him at SNL. I've seen a lot of people through SNL. I love Terminal 5, too. I saw Thug and Division there. Oh, who I seen great. at Tournament Five? I seen uh, Tom Mish. Tom mm. Mish, shout out Tom Mish. My boy Robert Rujo did, uh, shout out Rob did a show with him. Got me on guest list. <laughs> guest list gang. Yeah, we here. Yo, oh, um, mm, I seen quickly, quickly, quickly. I he's someone I gotta put you on to. Quickly, quickly. At, I seen him at elsewhere about two years ago. Super dope artist. I man. think you posted on your story. Yeah, once. yeah I, I, I listened to a little bit of him. He's great. He's Braxton good. Cook is another artist who mm. I think is really dope. He's I've seen him a few times. 
Um, he's out in LA now, but like, there's a lot of people that are on like the more like indie jazz scene. I've seen some of the greats, like some of the other greats. I've seen, you know, Erica. Um, I seen when we saw um, the Roots. The Roots are huge oh, for yeah. me. Yeah, the Roots is way up here for me. Yeah, Roots picnic was um, a goodie. We saw Yasin Bay. We saw <laughs> Queen Nigel. Queen Nigel shot, smoked bro. it. She smoked it. So those who don't know, Queen Nigel, obviously, you know, Medicine. What's the mm. other joint? Butterfly, something, so yeah, it's a, something. One of the other. big ones. She, she got just, a song with Dirk too. Lie to me, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, she's a really dope artist, and mm-hmm. I think that she, I don't know, she's one of those ones that I think maybe is not cutting through, or maybe it's not consistent enough, or the features, whatever it is. Um, I think she's very talented, and it's like I love when your experience for the, with an artist is like you vaguely heard of them, maybe heard one or two songs, but like you be out at a festival or whatever, you, mm-hmm. you're like, yo, who's that? Yeah, and you're like, wait. That's yeah. that person. I love that feeling because it's just like valid. It's like, oh, it makes you want to go to the music for. Have you seen SZA? Have not seen SZA. No, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't seen that. Okay. I want to though. I definitely want to. Um, I, but I was gonna ask, like, with the, along with the Queen Nigel thing, who's someone that you may not have been a big fan of, and then you saw them, and it made you a fan because you saw them live, and you like checked out their discography. Smino. Mm. Smino was at Afropunk before, he went before her went, The f- I think that was the first time I seen her, mm. or maybe second time I seen her. He went before, and I'm like, wait, who is this dude? I'm like, this dude is killing the state. Like, who is this guy? Mm. I'm like, and they're like, uh, Brand- I was with uh, Brandon Dennis, shout out Brandon. And he said, oh, that's Smino. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's Smino. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? At that point, he wasn't Smino who he's now. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was buzzing, but like, you know, he's now, so you say the name most people know. And I was like, oh, he's tough. And I went back and listened to, you know, some of his music. And I still haven't dove deep in, but, like, mm-hmm. it definitely was like, nah, nah. Like, he, I put him on this side of the of the fence. It's like, no, y'all, can't, y'all not just going to talk about Smino. Like, I don't really know his music like that, but, <laughs> no, he's valid. I've yeah. seen him live. Um, have I seen Lucky? That's one person I really, I just, I really want to see him. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've seen him either. I'm excited to see him one day. When that Silk Sonic, I, I'll put up the bread, man. I might have to throw down the car or something. When that Silk Sonic tour happened, yeah, swipe two <laughs> two tickets. I'm gonna find me a joint to go with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. But um, no, nah, it's who else? Who else was? The Baby's a really good show, you know. Despite how his perception now, because I'm not. Like and I've I, I've said this on the pod. I, I was falling off with him musically, anyways. But like when I saw, I him, forgot about him. I forgot. Him. <laughs> I, like no cap, no disrespect. I forgot about dog. <laughs> but uh, he he was at Rolling Loud 2019, and he's he, like that. I, I remember I tweeted after he performed. I was like, oh, the baby's a rock star. Like he is on his way. Explain a Rolling Loud. What's the what's the like? I never been to Rolling Loud. Explain what it's like. Rolling Loud is. I know what it is. But uh, super major, major festival. It's definitely catered towards it's the, rap, right? The, yeah, yeah. Primarily rap. It's definitely catered to like the mainstream white rap fan, and then they sprinkle in some acts that like black people would enjoy. Like I remember the, the, they had Griselda perform, and, I was, and it's New York, so it makes sense to have Griselda perform. But like the headliners were the first night, it was Travis. And then the second night it was ASAP Rocky. It's like who who wants ASAP Rocky to be headlining at this one? I mean, granted, his back catalog is so strong that he could get up there and do all his old stuff, and it's still dope. And he brought out Fifty Cent, which was really cool. That's fire. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember this one moment at Rolling Loud. Sheck West is performing. These two girls are fighting, like a very <laughs> aggressively fighting. And then the part in in Mo Bama comes on where it's fuck shit. Yeah, I'm Shaq West, and yeah. I'm getting re- and like they stop fighting, put their arms around each other, and start singing along to each other. I'm like, yo, if music is not powerful, like these girls, they look like they want to kill each other. They 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 were killing and each other, and it wasn't moshing. No, it, it it was fighting. They was throwing it was them genuine one. fighting. We were like giving them their room and watching. I was like, I'm I'm not jumping in that. And then that part in Obama comes on, and they just stop fighting, and then they unify. I'm like, music is this universal language that can stop fights. Incredible. Um, but yeah, Rolling Loud was cool, and it was cool because it was a two day festival, so it wasn't right. it wasn't as much of a commitment. Day in Vegas was three days, long days. Roots Picnic was cool because it was just one day, one as well. day. But also, I feel like sometimes the one day is like, I feel like you're rushing to try to see everything. Right. Sometimes it's like, dang, it's like 
at least give me a like a Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday mm-hmm. joint, you know, just to be able to see everything that yeah. I want to see because some the times where you have to choose and see. I've seen Kirk in the on the gospel. Kirk side. Franklin. Mm-hmm. Yes, I saw mm-hmm. Kirk in um in at the Citizen Bank in, in Ontario, California. Amazing, mm-hmm. amazing, fantastic. I loved it. Loved that concert. I have a note of all the people I've seen because I feel like I'm forgetting some. It's it's been, like these last three years have been so like you've been seeing a lot of very artists. very active for shows. So um, yeah, Drake twice, Black. I saw Beyonce and Hove on their tour that, on the that, run. Yeah, Which uh, one? Beyonce uh, two okay. on the run two. I, I saw them in New Orleans. Beyonce is. If you have anything negative to say about Beyonce, if you see her live, you won't have anything. Everything will be to erased. Anymore. Like her, vocally, she's incredible. Her presence on stage, that, like I, it's it's probably just <sighs> you're shaking in your boots. Yeah, bro. And like Hove, Hove is great too. Like they just the way that they played off each other, and like Beyonce sang the That's whole your joint. Yeah. That's your wife, bro. Like bro, what? He he won, but Beyonce sang the Holy Grail chorus that Justin Timberlake. Does on on yeah the whole song, the song yeah. I was like I might, I might like this better yo Beyonce it should have been you <laughs> on the chorus for real no cap. no cap um her multiple times I think I've seen her like three times at this point Thug I've seen like six times Gunna's a really good show Tiller is great we saw Tiller oh, I I don't think you came with us when we saw him in Q's but yes he, we did I was there you, you came with I'm us to to, sure to, to help benefit pretty Tiller sure I was there. Maybe that was twenty sixteen. No, twenty fifteen. Yeah, I was there. Twenty fifteen. Okay. I wasn't sixteen. All right. I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah. know why I'm so confident talking about. I was there. <laughs> but yeah, I, but I, feel I, like I, I don't. Because I've maybe. seen Tiller, and I'm trying to remember where I've seen him. You saw him. He came out with her to, to do. Could have been when we saw her at Brooklyn Steel. Yeah. But I feel like there's been another context. Maybe that was it. Maybe yeah. I'm bugging. Maybe. Um, Tyler's great. I don't know if you've seen Tyler the Creator live. Wow, He's great. I would love to see. Th- How did I forget Tyler? He did. I would love to see Tyler, but I, I, all key would want to see Tyler in a venue where I'm away from the madness mm. because I want to let his fans be them. Mm. I don't want to be nowhere near that. I feel you. I just want to enjoy the music. Yeah, he 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 went on like right before Future did at um, uh, Day in Vegas, or was it before Kendrick? I don't know. It was before one of them. But. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that crazy because he he was in his Igor phase, so like he 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 had the wig on and like he was he was just he was performing. and his presence was because for Igor thing he just stands there yeah you know, he like, was he, like was, he was being mad funny low you're like yo yo y'all better sing my song sing that I was like yo like yeah I I, I will I right, will right <laughs> he's he's great very eclectic performer we love that um let's see who else who else Roddy Rich is cool Max O'Cream is obviously good Pusha T is really good I saw him at Rolling Loud as well. Wale, Blueface is bad. Um, if if you think he can't rap on beat when you listen to him, you see him live and it's even worse. Um, yes. He's not good. I want to see Sir. Oh, I saw Sir. So, so Sir came out with Kendrick at Day in Vegas. So, so I'd love good. to see Sir. I'd like so to see his good. own set. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I want to see Katra. I was so mad. Yeah, the Katra show. Katra would be dope. Uh, dope. Um, Who's the last? I just had someone who I wanted to say. Miguel. Miguel. You know Miguel's one of my favorite artists. Woo! I saw him too. He. I missed him at <sighs> Apple Funk. The, it was at 2018, 2019. Mm-hmm. I missed him when he uh, when he came. I, we had to leave, and he was like the last act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To leave, but yeah, he's he's different. He's different. But yeah, man, I like the, this is the this is one of the joys of being a music fan, and it it really just it it, it makes it easier for you to assess an artist and how much they're relating with the people like mm-hmm. the people that you may not think are selling out venues are selling out venues the people that you may not think are that big that's a fact yeah are drawing the entire crowd at, at a festival so you know these narratives can fly on social media but if you go outside and you see what's really going on it changes your perspective completely um briefly but, last metric what are you looking at what are you judging an artist on and you're seeing their live show to validate their status either in your mind already or to make an opinion of seeing an artist right then there like what are some of your criteria um uh if it's an r&b artist one can, can they really sing vocals. like that's that that's just the, the biggest thing for me and how do 
how are the arrangements brought to life? Are you yes. just ra- are you rapping yes. over the track, or do you have a live band there? Is, is the band making it feel like the record does, or are they taking things in a completely different direction? Yes. I remember when Black did his um his more than tequila series thing. Like it was it was a virtual show. I wasn't there live, but his band turn cutting ties into like a ballad more so than what it is the right. recorded version of it and it just felt we're gonna hear that in so a when we leave. dope like <laughs> it's 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 incredible um the song he has a little baby know your rights like it's, it's it's a trap sounding song but his band made it feel like this like just marching band masterpiece type thing so i'm i'm, I'm looking to see how dope the band so is. arrangements so arrangements arrangements uh-huh. live band vocals yeah and like just craft ability yeah and some type of visual element would be cool too it doesn't have to be too much too distracting like at, at reggie's show you know right. he, he had his initials in the back and then one song he had like a the spinning video, yeah 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 like and then at the edm show i went to they obviously had a bunch of different crazy visuals because they knew people was gonna be, people on, be on, on things <laughs> on the substances um and for rappers it's like i said before breath control can you rap through your song well, yeah, like can you rap through the majority of it? Do you not need? Do you need the backup track to be filling in lines for you because you're too tired? Um, well, well, what's your energy like? What's the set list like? Yeah, like yeah. how 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 are you? Because typically artists are performing when they've got new music out, so you know you're gonna do a majority of your new stuff, but throw in some of that old stuff too. Like find ways to fit that in. I'm I'm also big on gauging the crowd's reaction to things, like you know. Typically, in a lot of live music settings, people are easy to please, but that's not always the case. Like, like d- d- during Whiskey Show, like, low key, the crowd was kind of dead, um, unless <laughs> uh, um, unless he did big songs like "Come Closer" with Drake, right? Essence, of course. So, like, I'm looking to see how the crowd reacts to you and how how you feed off of that. So that's fair. Yeah, yeah. for me, my my first thing is stage presence, mm-hmm. right? Because like, there's certain acts that even I know I'm like, I'm not really expecting much vocally from them, right? But I'm expecting the spectacle of mm-hmm. the whole show, right? Stage presence. Can you make the crowd do what you want the crowd to do? Yeah. That's big, like mm-hmm. crowd control, right? Because, you know, it's just to me the mo- one of the most important factors being on a stage. And it's gonna make me, as someone who doesn't know your music, just want to listen and pay attention yeah if you can control you know and have good engagement interactive things and know how to talk to a crowd know know when to be quiet and let the music speak know when to jump in make jokes you know that sort of stuff just really entertain like being yeah. a host for us through your experience um of course then the vocals and i love arrangements mm-hmm. i love a band we mm-hmm. need a band band is key if you can if you can afford a band get a band mm-hmm. if you can't just use keys and drums run your stems in the background because the keys can do everything but yeah, th- those are those are my my criteria. But mm. I'm excited to continue to see more shows. I'm trying to do that more now. Yeah. To really see more shows, see more acts that I that I enjoy on Spotify when they come to town. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, man, that's yeah. that's it. I enjoyed that. A little fun little exercise. Facts, man. Facts. And I I ain't even say all the names. I could have really flexed on y'all, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> let's jump into this bulletin board. A couple of announcements. Shout out to the guy Asar. Put out a new track, Vanity, featuring Femdot and Southpaw Suede. Asar is doing his thing. Um, mm-hmm. So if y'all are not hip to the Asar wave, jump on that Every wave. Every time you drink Sprite, think of Asar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming up on December 11th, Black Christmas is back. A local New York City party. It'd be lit. It'd be a lot of women out there. People be I'm dressed. Gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to slizzle real out. nicely. Yeah, yeah, we gonna. Have to slide out there so tickets are available now at blackchristmasnyc.com make sure you cop up see us there link up drink up for those who don't know it's kind of like the fine wine equivalent in new york yeah i would say like yeah but then like the holiday fine wine be happening in new york too i think i thought i, I think I, so i just thought it was more dc it's primarily a dc thing but i'm pretty sure i don't it know in new york, I, yeah. I can't pretend like i know whatever <laughs> i was just trying to give people context or whatever and lastly uh my queen ugh those feels again temporary highs violet skies snow allegra is on tour uh, what's, what's, what's the tour called again it's, uh, uh, those temporary highs those temporary highs because she got to tour uh, those feels again but she didn't really get to finish that tour You're really so. giving that uh, a yeah. lot of intent uh, yeah you know what i'm saying you got to that's i'm, I'm sure that's how that's <laughs> giving that uh, a lot that's of how she intended there. it you know what i'm saying so make sure y'all check out that snow tour i might have to check that out myself because uh is that radio city Oh, for the New York show. Okay, Radio City is a dope place. I went. Don't there. just get Radio City. It is on a Monday. But there's a youth. Uh, still, I mean, it's still, it's still Radio City. Leave work early. 
hit up hit up Snow Allegra on tour. So, yeah, that's that all. Um, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather. Make sure you check out Busy Sessions with Reggie Becton. Um, and make sure you go back and stream all our old episodes if you're a new listener. Tap in, stream, binge, all that good stuff. So, for myself, founder of Bald Nigga Ballers, for the Matcha Magistrate, um, we would like you all to stay safe, stay humble, and stay busy. Baby girl, baby girl, how you feeling? I've been out in the world, staying busy Taking time, getting right if you miss me yeah, yeah. I've been out yeah, in the yeah. world, staying yeah, yeah. busy Monday's 9 a.m. Monday's 9 a.m. Party with the gang Party with the gang Every week tell a friend Every week tell a friend Busy over everything Busy over everything Busy boys, gotta call now, ain't you heard? Got the slides. Got the slides. I'm the sorry.